This is the regular meeting of the Mobile City Council, Tuesday, May 4th. Please stand for our invocation, led by Reverend Byron L. Daniel, Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. May we pray. Eternal God, our Father, we do honor you this day, and we come before you, Lord God, thanking you for the many opportunities to excel and to see you in the midst of what we do. Father, in spite of the challenges we may face, we're still trusting and leaning on you. Father, bless these women and men that trust you with every fiber in their bodies. Give them wisdom. Allow them, Lord God, to see the things that you see so that they may respond in a way that will provide love, strength, and peace to the communities that you have entrusted them with. Bless us all, Lord God, because you have made us overcomers in all situations. We ask for your blessing upon this great country, upon this state, and upon this great city of Mobile. We speak this in your matchless name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, President Manzi. Here. Vice President Small. Here. Councilmember Richardson. Here. Councilmember Williams. Councilmember Daves. Here. Councilmember Rich. Here. Councilmember Gregory. Here. Statement of rules. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We first would ask that you turn off or silence all electronic devices as you enter into the meeting. Any person desiring to address the council must sign in indicating the resolution, ordinance, appeal, or public hearing agenda item before entering the council meeting. When addressing the council, the speaker must state clearly for the record his or her name and address. Any person desiring to speak to the council on a non-council agenda item must contact the city clerk's office on the Thursday preceding the Tuesday in which you'd like to speak by 2 p.m. If your commentary is not pertinent to City of Mobile business, then you will not be given the opportunity to speak. All those who haven't followed that particular rule will not be given the opportunity to speak. Speakers are granted three minutes to make their presentation. At the end of two minutes, a bell will sound, indicating that you have 60 seconds to conclude any and all of your commentary. The second bell indicates that all of your time has expired. When addressing the council, there is to be no personal address to any individual council member. We respectfully request that all of your statements and inquiries be made to myself, who serves as chair, and then I will subsequently recognize any member of the council who wishes to speak. To maintain the quorum, there will be no undue applause and or public outcry allowed. Those are the rules for this particular meeting, and we are appreciative of your continued interest in your municipal government. Approval of minutes of April 27th. So moved. Second. second. It's been properly moved and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Communications from the mayor. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, yesterday afternoon, Shonda Smith and I were joined by Council Vice President C.J. Small, Representative Adeline Clark, and Senator Vivian Figures at the um, Dauphin Island Parkway Senior Center. It was a grand occasion, a ribbon cutting. Uh, that senior center has evolved to where it's now a full service senior center. 
Uh, we have brand new uh, cardio room, brand new computer lab, as well as a new fitness center, plus having a full-time therapeutic recreation specialist to help the seniors learn how to use all of the new equipment. Uh, this is the fulfillment of a vision that was created years ago, or a dream uh, created years ago, to have a, another senior center in the city of Mobile, especially for the um, citizens that live in that area of town. I know that Councilman Small will make some more remarks about it in his remarks, but anyway, there were a lot of happy seniors yesterday as well as city staff and others that have made this happen. It was really a collaborative effort with funding and equipment coming from different sources, you know, to complete that build out. On May 22nd, uh, we will christen, uh, excuse me, we will commission the USS Mobile because of COVID requirements um, put, that are being adhered to by the US Navy. Uh, the commissioning ceremony will be smaller than what we had hoped for. But we will be having a parade the Friday night before that, May 21st. The parade will roll at 6.30. And then the fireworks will have a huge fireworks display over the river at 9.30 that evening. So uh, a great send off for the commissioning of the USS Mobile and hope you make plans to attend that. You know, last Thursday, Friday, and Saturday was the draft. Uh, there were a lot of people that were paying attention to who was being drafted and a lot of excitement. But uh, probably none more than the folks that do our Senior Bowl. You know, every year we're um, trying to get the very best players in the nation to come play in the Senior Bowl. And it seems that this year we set a record. Uh, that record being the number of people that were at the Senior Bowl, or played in the Senior Bowl, being drafted. Kudos to the Senior Bowl and their staff. I know that next year they hope to even improve upon the things that they've been doing in years past. And actually, had we not been under COVID restrictions this past year, I think that you would have seen more activity uh, from the Senior Bowl. <clears throat> the, one of the uh, ESPN, ESPN hosts, Field Yates, noted that, uh, and really this is a testament to the Senior Bowl, the number of times he mentioned Senior Bowl or mentioned Mobile, you know, during those three days was really a great reflection on, on what that event means for our city. And as they say, the draft starts in Mobile. <clears throat> uh, last weekend we had a litter cleanup out at Melivana Park. Uh, this weekend, uh, the litter cleanup will be at Tricentennial Park and it'll be coordinated by the Baykeepers, the Capital League, and the Fuse Project. Uh, I would normally be at that event. I know Councilman Richardson will probably be there um, with his glove and his bag and his picker, but I will be, uh, have an opportunity to visit my grandchildren in Connecticut that I haven't seen for a year, so uh, I'm sorry that I won't be there with you, Councilman, but I think you understand that situation. On May 15th, we'll have another little cleanup at Baumhauer Randall Park. Uh, and my last comment has to do with uh, the recognition of Star Wars Day. <laughs> um, for the Star Wars uh, followers, you know, we are going to actually celebrate Star Wars tonight uh, with a movie in the park, and it will be a free screening of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. It'll be about 8 o'clock p.m. It'll be uh, at the Mike Dow Amphitheater, which is right in close proximity to uh, the uh, Dodge Community Center. So bring your chairs, bring your blankets, whatever, but uh, prepare uh, to come watch that event. And I really want to, again, compliment all that our Parks and Rec Department are doing to change the programming and add to the programming that we're doing to make sure that our citizens uh, have a lot to choose from of things they can do. And in keeping with this being uh, Star Wars Day, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. President. Ms. Gleary. Mayor, I wondered if you were going to get to that. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I <laughs> um, just wanted to piggyback a little bit on what you were talking about with the draft and the Senior Bowl, of course, and congratulations to everybody at the Senior Bowl for such a 
a, a great job that they do and, and all of the recognition that they received. And just uh, one other one that I would like to point out is uh, Mobile's own Kadarius Tony, who also happens to be a University of Florida graduate, one of my uh, fellow uh, alums now, and uh, he is going to the New York Giants. So right. I did just want to uh, point that out, uh, you know, great for Mobile, of course, and also certainly for Blunt High School and the University of Florida. <laughs> Wonderful. Any, any other uh, remarks? Yes. Thank you. Did you want to? Pardon? Proclamation. Your announcement. Okay. Um, at, um, employee of the month, Shonda has a presentation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I want to, um, it's good to be here in person instead of having to do this on Zoom. It makes it different. So we are presenting May's um, Employee of the Month, Mr. Eric Austin. Mr. Eric Austin works with under Scott Novak at the Tennis Center. Um, as I was saying, every month we've been doing this, they are voted on by their peers. We have 15 peers that represent all the different divisions under Parks and Recreation. They come together every month and they deliberate on who should be Employee of the Month and why, and then they present it to the executive team um, to make the decision. And so I'm going to read why the um, group said that Eric Austin um, is Employee of the Month. He's punctual, professional in speech and dress, Kind, always fun to work with, positive attitude and work and life. Um, he's a hard worker, will do anything and go above and beyond to help out. Looks for other things that need to be done without having to be asked. And mows and cares for the grounds around 60 tennis courts daily. Um, and this is coming from his peers that see the things that he does and appreciates it. And so um, I am very excited to offer this award to Mr. Eric Austin. He's been here 20 years. As Eric's supervisor, I would like to just brag on him just a little bit more. Um, supervisor is the key word. He's, he's just a great supervisor, and sometimes the best supervisor is what they, just getting to do it yourself and being a role model, and that's what he does. So just to give you a quick example, this morning we have a, a big national tennis tournament at the tennis center, and it rained, which it does every now and then in Mobile. So 5 o'clock this morning, Eric was out squeegeeing courts with a group, of, a group of workers. So they had the, the courts all ready to go. So then when everybody, all the players came in from New York, California, Florida, Hawaii, wherever they came from, they saw great courts because Eric spent three hours out in the courts squeegeeing before they ever got there. And it's kind of a testament to what he does. And just uh, probably the best testament you give to someone is what kind of, what kind of person they really are. Uh, his daughter just got a full ride scholarship to Alabama for the same reasons. Wow. Ac academics, leadership, so the, 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 the old saying, uh, the nut doesn't fall far from the tree and it's in a positive way this way, that, that's, that's what he does. So congratulations, you tell your daughter that she got mentioned in city council today. <laughs> the photographer would like to make a picture with you all. But, he, but, but diary wants to speak. I think the honor we want Mr. Austin, what did you have anything to say? We certainly would like to hear from you. I just want to thank everybody, the mayor, city councilman, and the staff. You're doing a great job. And I want to thank my supervisor, Scott Spencer, and I want to thank Mr. Smith for the program. I just want to thank everybody. Yes, sir. And, it, and, and we got a good team out there. It's not just me. It's more, it's more guys that work just as hard as I do. You know, thank you. Absolutely.
thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you and all of our hardworking employees do each and every day. Thank you again. And congratulations on your daughter. Adoption of the agenda. So moved. So second. second. Probably moved and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Agenda is adopted. Appeals, we have requests for a waiver of the noise ordinance on North Monterey Street on May 22nd, at the grounds on May 22nd, St. Michael Street on May 23rd, at the grounds on May 14th, and Ridgemont Court on May 8th. So moved. Second. Probably moved and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Presentation of petitions and other communications to the council. Greg Foster. Well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity to address uh, you with my concerns. My name is Greg Foster. My wife and I reside at 2500 Granada Avenue in West Mobile in beautiful downtown Cottage Hill, 36693. <laughs> my purpose uh, in speaking to you this morning is twofold. And because I'm aware of the time constraints, I'll be brief. First, I'd like to uh, introduce myself as a retiree of the city of Mobile having served 32 years with the Mobile Fire Service uh, Rescue Service. I walked into the old Gus Rim Fire Station on the corner of Moffat and Western uh, Drive on uh, June the 1st of 1970, that's 51 years ago, time flies. And uh, reluctantly, I retired June the 1st of 2002 as a fire service captain aboard Fireboat 2 and Engine 2 down here at the old Matt Sloan fire station. I said reluctantly because I needed, uh, I loved the department and the job and my body was talking to me. It, uh, it's a young man's job and I knew it and it was time to go home. To say that I don't miss the excitement and the adrenaline rush would be a lie. But in retirement I found a way to stay semi-attached to the job by becoming actively involved in our Retire Firefighters Association. It's a brotherhood of the representatives of days gone by. I found myself becoming vice president of this organization several years ago, and in July 2019, uh, became the president due to the resignation of our then president. I mentioned earlier that my purpose here was twofold. So secondly, I'm here to ask with all due respect that the lines of communication be afforded me to talk to you and the mayor's office from time to time about the issues of pay raises for the 324 retirees I regularly communicate with through either email or hard copy newsletter sent out bi-monthly. I would be remiss if I did not uh, mention that pension Amounts put aside with 1960 or 70 or 80 dollars in salaries have shrunk to an all-time low in their buying powers. One function we have is contacting, uh, meeting with, or directly over the phone, the widows of retirees or retirees who have lost spouses, and they're wanting to. Uh, be informed and gain knowledge as to what they do or what they can do to get through the uh, the benefits section of the city of Mobile as it pertains to retired personnel. We're losing dozens of dedicated firefighters each year to sicknesses and ailments more likely than not contracted on the job and manifested after retirement. We as an organization initiated a last alarm remembrance ceremony in 2020 to recognize the service of an individual when he or she passes. Sad to say, since January 2018, we have lost approximately 40 retirees. I've spoke to the surviving spouses in most all cases 
And the common statement is, I don't know what to do or who to contact or what I'm going to do next. And that's where we step in. Our, our mission statement simply states that we exist to serve as an advocate voice and a source of information for the retiree in matters concerning benefits offered through the City of Mobile Police and Firefighter Pension as well as the City of Mobile. And we do this in time of need and at their request. Not, we don't take over automatically in any, anybody's business. I don't know too many things that have not in, that haven't increased in the past 16 years, but I do know one. Since uh, October 2005, we have ha not had a COLA or cost of living raise to offset anything. We've had a bonus or two, but they are like life described in the Bible. It appears for a little while and then it vanishes like a vapor. So we need something more lasting uh, from month to month that we can count on. This is about dignity as well. Choices are being made as have been told to me as to what expenditures are necessary. And that's sad. But thank you for listening to, uh, uh, to me today and I look forward to talking to you all again soon. And uh, I could be contacted through uh, Mary Berg with our pension office here or I'll be glad to leave contact information with the city clerk's office. But uh, this is something near, near and dear to a, a lot of people and it's a, it's a subject that comes up quite often and I would like to uh, enter into some kind of meaningful negotiations in the, in the near future. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time and for your service. Reggie Hill, regarding resolutions 21308, 01, 309, 310, 23319, and 6322. Thank you, uh, Madam City Clerk, Mr. President, members of the Council, Mr. Mayor, citizens, and stakeholders of Mobile. Uh, good morning. Uh, Good morning. Hill, 1007 uh, Center Street. Uh, I rise to address those uh, agenda items expressed by our uh, city clerk, it's beginning with 21 uh, 308. I'm always, always pleased to see any measure on this agenda dealing with drainage. Uh, anytime we can do that, I always say kudos to uh, this council administration for getting it done. Uh, my only question is who can provide a uh, compilation of the similar drainage um, infrastructure contracts approved? Uh, similar to this, uh, particularly in the past two uh, CIP cycles. I know at the CIP committee meetings there have been some questions similar to this asked, and I don't know if a report had been turned in or if not, or if that could be made available. So I just want to know what similar contracts um, uh, related to this one can have a compiled list provided. Uh, Dealing with 01309, uh, do we have any reporting from the Mobile Municipal Court uh, indicating the uh, urgency of utilizing the Civic Center? Uh, for additional space for the court matters. Um, do we have an indication of the primary cases that we're seeing on the docket and maybe we have some plan in place to kind of prevent that and utilize the space in here at Government Plaza? I'd love to have some insight on that. Um, 01310, uh, I was uh, blessed to be a part of the initial meeting with the Alabama Historic Commission when uh, various archaeologists and uh, uh, historians presented the Clotilda's finding. And at that meeting, they also uh, ensure that the local community agencies will spearhead most of these initiatives that are happening in Africa Town. But based on the contracts that we've seen here and some in the county, uh, it seems that there might be some uh, different overseers for these projects. So I would just like to get some type of indication of who would be spearheading uh, the uh, Heritage Home um, as well as any of those other uh, projects that are related to the Africa Town community because there seems to be some uh, uh, discrepancy in understanding that. Now moving on to 2-1 319, um, the original blueprints for Mardi Gras Park uh, suggested that there would be an amphitheater type uh, structure on the premises. Um, and we see that this is a pretty large allocation that's being uh, potentially approved today. Can we get some specificity on what exactly this improvement project will be? Um, I hadn't heard anything about it. I'm not sure if it was discussed at pre-council, but I, I definitely entertain that. Um, and then finally, 60-3, uh, uh, 
two two. And I only picked this one because there are different ones on here, but I just picked the first one that was there. Um, I know that it has to go through a process of being approved by the council, then it has to go through the finance department legal, and then it's signed off in the administration. I just want to know what the turnover ratio is for these type of uh, public purpose needs, uh, particularly when they are approved by the council and the finance uh, department says that they should be uh, dispersed. So those are my questions. I hope that someone from the council or administration would uh, entertain them. Taxpayer dollars. Thank you. You're on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Hill. CIP resolutions held over 21308 authorized contract with James H. Adams and Son Construction Company for 2019 CIP drainage group F. So moved. Second. Probably moved and second. Any discussion? If none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Resolutions held over. There are no objections. I'll take all of these together. Yes, ma'am. 01309 authorized and, um, and 310 are authorizing intergovernmental agreements with Mobile County for use of the Civic Center for court activity and regarding Africatown Heritage House. 08311 approved purchase order to gray shift for Mobile device forensic software annual licenses renewal 08312 approved purchase order to jerry pate turf and irrigation for two club car utility vehicles 08313 approved purchase order to gray bar electric for 50 led roadway luminaries 08314 approved purchase order to stevens ford for three ford explorer suvs 08315 approved purchase order to stevens ford for two ford four by four pickups 08316 approved purchase order to davidson oil company and petroleum traders corporation for fuel for city vehicles 08317 approved item based bid for commercial commercial kitchen equipment 21318 authorized contract with sanders highland corporation for fire station number six bathroom floor replacement 21319 authorized contract with harris contracting services for mardi mardi gras park improvements 21320 authorized service contract with Morrow Contracting doing business as, as Advanced Service Plus Plumbing Company for plumbing services at various city facilities. And 21321 authorized contract with E. Cornell Malone Corporation for History Museum of Mobile re roofing. So moved. Second. Probably moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Mr. Vice President. Uh, just reminding the clerk office that 01 310, that that's going to be sponsored by all council members yes. on that particular resolution. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I am space. Ordinance is being introduced for the first time, 01023. Motion to suspend a rule for immediate consideration for ordinance, 01 023. Second. second. Popular moved and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 01023, ordinance defining voting wards. So moved. Second. second. Probably moved in second. Any discussion? I, I do have I do have something to say. Yes, sir, Mr. Davis. Um, several weeks ago, the clerk uh, came to me and uh, mentioned that uh, one of the polling places um, in District Five. We had six polling places in District Five, and one of the polling places had indicated uh, that uh, they didn't want to serve as a polling place anymore. Uh, and so uh, there was another existing polling place, which uh, is very close to uh, the one that didn't want to serve anymore. Uh, I don't know, three blocks away, not very far at all. Um, it's Three Circle Church uh, on Imogene and Sage. 
uh, and uh, the clerk had gotten the numbers uh, from the county uh, at, at how many people had voted at each one of those uh, polling places last time around and compared it to uh, voter turnout we have at other polling places in the city and it appeared that uh, the three circle church could handle the combined voting numbers of both precincts so that's what we're doing that's one of, i don't know what there's any other change in this but but that's one change in this is that uh is that five will go from six polling places to five five polling places and uh, these two uh, these two wards will be combined in three circle church thank you Ms. Rich? Turn your mic on. I would like to thank our council attorney who picked up on the fact that um, Darby Creek, who was annexed into the city um, prior to any election, um, was originally not drawn into the map, but it is now. With this is what we're approving. So I wanted to give them a heads up that they'll be going to the polls, at which they would have, and it would have been very disappointing if they couldn't get their <laughs> first time to vote in a city council election. So thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. Mr. President, Ms. Bailey. I know as we get closer to the August 24th election, more information will go out about this, but what we're doing in, in many cases, as Mr. Uh, Daves has pointed out, is that some of the polling places that have been active in the past no longer want to participate. So that's one reason for some of these changes, as well as apparently it's difficult to get enough people to work the polls. So there are some changes within the, the, the polling places, maybe where you used to vote for municipal elections may not be the same place, but you will get information in the mail to let you know where your polling place is. And the thing that I always run into from, from people is that they don't understand that just because you vote in one place for a national or state election does not mean you're going, you're, you will be voting in the same place in a municipal election and it does get confusing. So just watch your mail, you will get a postcard telling you where you will be voting in the municipal elections. Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Richardson. I would like to inform the citizens of District 1 that there will be no change, changes in polling places in District 1. And in that vein, I want to make certain that citizens and District 2 understand that there will be a change. We will be going from seven precincts uh, as we would have had in 2017, 2013, 2005, to six. The Spring Hill uh, Recreation Polling Precinct and the Bishop State Polling Precinct uh, will be merging to make one precinct and for a variety of reasons. Uh, the ingress and egress at Spring Hill is, uh, is quite challenging, so we've heard that from citizens. And then also finding uh, persons who would be interested in heading up that particular polling precinct uh, was, was, was pretty tough. One of the uh, great leaders uh, from a polling perspective at Spring Hill passed, and we'll be mentioning him a little further down in the agenda. So. We'll go from seven precincts. Uh, if you voted at Spring Hill a Recreation Center, you will be receiving, well, all citizens should be receiving notification, but specifically if you voted at Spring Hill, you are now, for the municipal election, be voting at Bishop State. Any further comments? Probably motion is moved and second. We've discussed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the ordinance passes. Consent resolutions being introduced for the first time, 6322 through 46328. Mr. President, motion to suspend the rules for immediate consideration for consent resolution 60-322 through 46-328. two eight. Second. Probably moved in second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 6322, 323, and 324 are determining appropriations to Ross Wood Homeowners Association 
W.P. Davison High School and Three Mile Creek Partnership serves a public purpose and approved payment. 37, 325, 326, and 327 are recommending approval to the ABC Board for issuance of a lounge retail liquor class one license for Stray Cats Tavern on Halls Mill Road for issuance of a retail beer, table, wine, off-premises only license for Hop In Food Mart on Dolphin Island Parkway and for issuance of a retail beer, table, wine, off-premises only license for Bannock um, Food Mart on Downtown and Boulevard. 46328 honorarily renamed North Conception Street from Adams Street to Congress Street as Rennie Brabner Avenue. So moved. Second. Been probably moved and second in a discussion. I certainly would be remiss if I did not remark on 46328, which is where we're moving to honorarily rename North Conception Street from Adams Street. Congress Street as Rennie Brabner Avenue. Uh, this particular section is in the heart of the Tunty Square. And if there ever was a man that loved the community, if there ever was a man that was concerned about uh, a section of our beloved city, that was certainly George Rennie Brabner. I considered him to be Mr. The Tunty Square. I met him in this yard campaigning and he went on and on uh, telling me about how he and his family invested in that section of town when many had overlooked it had said that its best days were behind it and because of him and because of others uh, who are pioneers and trailblazers uh, like him uh, that's now one of the better communities in our city well respected not only in his neighborhood, but across this city, across this state, across the region. He had a heart of gold. He loved his family, he had strong faith, and he loved his community. He was so much a part of the Tunty Square that embedded and, and codified in their bylaws, he had a permanent seat on the board of directors. They couldn't get rid of him. If they wanted to, they couldn't vote him out. He didn't have a term. He didn't have a tenure. He loved the Tunty Square. And I think this is just a small measure uh, to show not only his family, uh, but to also make certain that citizens who were soldiering across that section of town for many decades to come will remember uh, and wonder and get to know who many Brabner was and the contribution that he played in the revitalization of the Tonti Square. A great man and certainly merits this honor and much more. He has a great family and uh, we look forward to working with them to coordinate a ceremony uh, to appropriately pay homage to his life, his legacy, and his hard work and certainly for this to take place in the, in the heart of where he loved and lived, I think is most appropriate. Mr. President. Mr. Williams. If I may uh, speak to that subject as well. Yes, sir. Um, upon my arrival on the city council, I started uh, going to everything. I didn't know what I should go to and what I shouldn't go to. <laughs> but I will guarantee you that every historical commission, shield and banner, uh, historical review it didn't matter architectural review board it, if it was an important subject Rennie was there if it was important to our city's historical fabric Rennie was there and uh, I didn't know a bunch about Mardi Gras I was from Louisiana um, and not from New Orleans I was from Louisiana and I we just didn't do Mardi Gras up where I was living um, and so I got around and when I came here lo and behold the expert on Mardi Gras, and later through the Moon Pie Minute, uh, Rennie Brabner informed our entire population of how important uh, Mardi Gras was to us and, and of its significant uh, history here. So I, uh, I too, uh, hats off to you for, uh, for thinking of this and for making it happen. 
and uh, forever Rennie Bradner in Mobile, Alabama. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President. Ms. Gregory. Um, I just want to join uh, my colleagues in thanking you for doing this. And um, I just have a little bit different take a little earlier. When I first moved to Mobile and was a reporter, I would come down to cover the city council. Rennie Brabner was here covering the city council along with me when he was working in radio. So a whole different take on that. And I just remember Rennie from all of those days, as well, of course, his... A tremendous involvement in Mardi Gras and the historic fabric of the city and of course in helping to develop Detente Square. So thank you for doing this. Very well deserved. Absolutely. If I could comment. Ms. Ms. Rich. Thank you. Um, I was actually here in, starting in 1993 when the city worked with the housing board and Rennie was all about um, helping to get a really good program to redevelop that area with the housing stock. Um, and we had meetings after meetings, and um, it was really a testament to his passion of his love for the city. And um, it, I, I'm just absolutely honored to see his name be emblazed as an honorary um, sign so that people going by can ask, what about him? In um, those that knew him and those into the future, because his... Um, his desire, and of course the radio, he, he, he had the airwaves, so he was capturing the entire city's um, love of the area and how it meant to come back and the housing. Um, and he made sure that it was to be owner occupied. And a certain amount of time was devoted to how it could be developed. And again, it created the energy that was from the bottom up and from the bottom of his heart and it's so successful today it's a good template to keep using Mr. President, a different subject if I may. Mr. Williams I don't normally venture off into other people's uh, districts but there is one on here that I see every day my friend Dominic Stratus is here today um, along with um, his uh, essentially he's a landowner and uh, the person sitting next to him is the person who is going to run a business that used to be in District 4, but now it's just outside in District 3 on Halls Mill Road. And Mr. Uh, Sidham, I drive by there every day, three times a day. Um, not only is the city going to be watching you, uh, but that has become a place that uh, uh, Mr. Small and I really don't care to look at. It's a bar he's opening on Halls Mill Road. Uh, I know from your past in um, other parts of the city that, um, that you're going to do well, uh, but please know that we're all going to be looking at you. We wish you well, and um, I know that uh, Mr. Small thinks the same. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Items pass. Resolution has been introduced for the first time, 08329 through 6336. Uh, Mr. President, by council rule, these resolutions are going to be laid over for one week. Announcements. Mr. Richardson. All righty. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I take no pleasure in making this announcement. Um, more than a week ago, it was posted on social media that Fred Richardson was arrested by the Sheriff's Department for drunk driving and that he accused the officer that arrested him of being a racist. Moreover, that no one came down to the jailhouse to bail him out at the time of the posting. Well, I immediately, when I saw it, I refuted it on Facebook and I was through with it. But people are still contacting me, wanting to know was it another Fred Richardson or was, was it me? So it seems to me, although uh, this issue was aired uh, in print media, 
uh, on social media, and I thought by now everyone had been notified that it was false, but there are still people just reading about it, and they are concerned about it. So since we are now in-house with our council meeting, uh, we can, um, we are broadcast on Comcast on Saturdays, uh, Channel 6, where more people will be uh, looking at the council meeting and maybe they'll, they'll all get it straight down. Uh, I want to start off by saying that animals can only pro pro procreate, animals can only procreate with other animals in their species. In other words, dogs can, can mate and have dogs, but dogs can't mate with hogs now. And hogs can't mate with no other animals and produce a child. You have to stay within your species, all animals, including, including humans. And for, for the record, because this man accused me of being the racist. I am in the same race of the 7.5 billion humans on the face of the earth. Our species is homo sapiens. I can procreate with any other female specimen on the planet of the earth. I don't care where they're from, how they look. My great granddaddy was a white man. I'm in the same race with Everett, so I don't, I don't have no need to call anybody a racist because they are all in my race. I want to get that straight first. Then I want to get back to being drunk. When I was 16 years old, my father passed. He left nine children in the house with our unemployed mother on a farm up the country. To me, we were in a hopeless situation. My grandmother lived next door and she was an amputee. I had absolutely no time for any of that foolishness. First of all, the spring was almost a half a mile from the house and I had to make sure water was in both houses. We cooked and heated our house with wood. I had to make sure we had wood and water, and oftentimes we, we didn't have enough food. I had to go to the woods, kill squirrels, rampants, whatever I could kill and cook those. I had absolutely not one second for no drinking and getting drunk. I had to take over as the man of both houses. And let me say, that condition we were left in, we didn't stay in that condition. It was 12 of us, two died early, 10 finished, 10, 10 lived to get grown, all 10 finished high school, seven went to college. My brother under me was mayor of North Randall, Ohio. It's not where you was born, it's where you're going. I was not arrested for drunk. I have never been drunk in my life. I don't drink, I don't intend to drink. So. Whoever posted that was trying to demean my character. So it's up to me to set the record straight. All I'm trying to do today is set the record straight. I am sober. I've never been drunk. I intend to remain sober. Let the record reflect that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Mr. Vice President. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Well, yesterday was a, uh, another beautiful day in District 3, especially in uh, South DIP uh, area. As the mayor had mentioned earlier, we had a, um, a soft ribbon cutting ceremony uh, yesterday where we had seniors have been uh, advocating for years uh, for the extension of the uh, Senior Sales Center off the South DIP. And uh, long <clears throat> years of uh, planning along with the administration, uh, Ms. Smith and others, um, yesterday came you know, a reality for uh, several, many seniors down in the South DIP area and also District 3. Uh, we had a uh, nice turnout, even though we were trying to just keep it small, 
But I do appreciate everyone who had all contributed, especially uh, Ms. Uh, Representative Barbara Drummond uh, for helping to um, supply uh, some of the exercise equipment and also the uh, Seniors um, Sales Center DIP Parkway Foundation. I'd like to thank them also. And again, like I had told the seniors on yesterday, you know, this is just the beginning of many great things that's coming uh, to S South DIP area. And again, I do thank everyone and also thank you to Cassandra for coming out on yesterday. And on May the 15th, as the mayor had mentioned earlier, uh, there will be a, what I call a North DIP Maysville cleanup, uh, which will take place at the um, Bonhoeffer Randall Park, which is located on Duval Street. It's also known as Duval Park. And that will be from 8.30 to 11.30. Uh, my office is sending out letters to the community to remind them to uh, please come out and help to spruce up our community on Saturday, uh, May the 15th from 8.30 to uh, 11.30. And I think this will be a great opportunity because many CAG groups have not um, met uh, within the past year. And I'm inviting several CAG groups to come out on that particular Saturday to participate in this cleanup. And as we had mentioned earlier that we had the soft <coughs> ribbon cutting ceremony at the Senior Center and District 3 that is one of many uh, ribbon cuttings that we have planned that's coming up. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, sir, Mr. Vice President, and congratulations. Uh, Ms. Gina Gregory. Thank you, Mr. President. This past Friday, I uh, joined neighborhood leaders in the Carriage Woods Improvement Community, uh, Carriage Woods Mobile Community Improvement Group for a meeting, and uh, Captain Rodney Greeley with the 4th Precinct, Kena Andrews and Tony Ebright, who were both with uh, Public Services, joined in that meeting. And I just want to thank them for the invitation. We had a great uh, discussion, a lot of questions and answers, and just really appreciate all the support and the participation by the staff. The uh, neighborhood folks really appreciated um, everybody taking their time to be there. It rained on us a little bit, but they had a pop tent that they put up and uh, we sat under that and uh, let it rain. And uh, again, just really appreciate um, Captain Greeley and Kena Andrews and Tony Ebright for participating. I also am excited because uh, we are finishing up resurfacing in the district. It's long awaited. Um, as I think everybody on the council knows, there was a lot of preliminary work that had to be done in some of our neighborhoods, which um, delayed the resurfacing coming in. So resurfacing crews are back in the district now, uh, finishing up where we had started with a lot of concrete work. So it's really good to see them in two neighborhoods right now. So we'll finish up those and we have one other street to do that's close by. So we're asking all of the residents um, as you drive around and you see the uh, equipment in there and you see maybe a little bit of a mess because when you resurface, you can't help but make a little bit of a mess. Uh, the crews will be back in, they will finish it up, they will clean up, and you will love the result. So just thank you all for your patience. I know you will really appreciate it when it's all completed. Uh, coming up this Saturday, we have a cleanup with the Carriage Woods uh, Mobile Community Improvement Group. This is one that had been scheduled before, but with all the inclement weather we've had, they had to keep postponing it. So it will be this Saturday at 10 a.m. They will meet in the cul-de-sac of Carriage Woods Court. So anyone who would like to participate, come on. I uh, would love to have you there. And then May 22nd is the um, rescheduled date for the St. John United Methodist Church COVID vaccine clinic. It will be from 8 until noon, and St. John is located on Overlook Road. So again, it's 16 and up. Uh, no appointments needed, so come on out and get your COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Gregory. Mr. John Charles Williams. Thank you very much. I um, wanted to I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how I start this. I don't want to dwell on what my... Um, my physical uh, condition is right now. It's not, nobody knows. I have a little bit of dizziness and it was a lot worse. Um, it was a lot worse on Wednesday morning at 1.35 a.m. And um, if y'all have never done it, try calling 911 when you really need it and, um, and then start counting. Um, it almost seemed like that uh, by the time my wife unlocked the door, they were coming through, the Mobile Fire Rescue. And uh, the professionalism 
of the crew that showed up for me, Mike Bombs and Corey Newman, uh, I'll just tell you, there, it could not be matched anywhere in the country. Um, and I say that not, not to bring any attention to me. I'm going to be fine. Y'all know me. Uh, but, but we have a lot to be thankful for in Mobile, Alabama. Now, there was a day when we didn't know if we were going to even have an ISO rating that, uh, that anybody would even want to look at and to have an ISO rating of one. It's not just about insurance. It's not just about driving down the cost for all of our citizens and making people want to join our city. It is about those people that have lived here and have worked here and uh, make Mobile their permanent home. They have a real prize in the Mobile Fire Rescue Department. Now, I don't mean to take any attention off all the others and the credit that they deserve as well. Uh, but uh, first and foremost in my mind right now mm -hmm. is, um, is the Mobile Fire Rescue Department. And so uh, uh, Chief Batiste, um, Chief Lamey, um, all of you that have contributed, um, Chief Barber and uh, Mark, uh, wherever he is over on the beach, <laughs> um, I'm so glad. And I know many citizens are that don't get a chance to have this platform and say it, that we have a world-class, literally not just claiming, world-class, uh, among the 1% fire rescue department in all the country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams, and we're glad to see you uh, being in good health and pray that you continue to do so. Mr. Joel Daves. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to talk uh, this morning about something else we have to be <clears throat> uh, proud and happy about, and that's Mardi Gras Park. Today the council approved a $1 million contract uh, to make Im additional improvements to Mardi Gras Park. But I want to step back for a minute and talk about how we got to where we are today. Um, you know, there used to be a courthouse building there, and when this building was built, uh, the old courthouse, which had been built in the 50s, and sat on that uh, piece of land across from the old city hall, was torn down and the rubble was dumped into the basement. It was covered with dirt and a chain link fence was put around it. The county entered into an agreement with the city uh, for a 50-year lease uh, for a park there. Uh, and Mr. William J. Heron, who was a a uh, great benefactor in this city. He set aside a million dollars of private money to uh, help build his vision of a Mardi Gras park on that piece of land. Um, for 20 years, there was a mound of dirt out there. The problem with the 50-year lease was that the, that the lease agreement provided that if the, if the city did not start doing something with the land, building a park out there by a date certain that the lease was null and void and the property would revert to the county. When Mayor Stimson took office in November of 2013, that date was fast approaching. And uh, the mayor got to work with his administration uh, engaged homes and homes architects to come up with a plan, a master plan for the, for the park. And uh, eventually, two and a half million dollars, a million dollars of which came from private sources, was invested in the park, and that's what we have today. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, in the last nine months or so, the city was approached uh, again uh, by a private foundation who wished, that wished to fund additional improvements to the park. These improvements, uh, and, and the, the, the improvements to the park that are involved in this contract that we are talking about today involve three things. One, some, uh, some infrastructure improvements to improve the drainage uh, out there, which is about $400,000. And then, some significant additional landscaping with large live oak trees and a performance venue. 
and some other improvements. The uh, private foundation is going to provide funding of $650,000 and the city will provide the rest of it. But what we're going to end up with out there is a beautiful, functional public space for generations of Mobilians to come. And it's an indication of what can be done with a true private-public partnership. And I'd like to compliment the administration and thank the private donors that have made all this possible. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Ms. Rich. Thank you very much. First, I'd like to um, say to Councilman Williams, I'm glad that everything came out okay. I had no idea. And um, yes, we have just the best in the Mobile Fire Rescue. They go above and beyond. I'm always hearing from citizens who have your type of experience and how grateful they are. So um, thanks for using your format to, to speak to that. It, it truly is magnificent. And citizens who have never needed that type of response might not know just the talent and the resource that our city has. Um, I would also like to uh, recognize uh, Baker High School is technically not in the city limits, but there are a lot of students that reside in our, in our city who go to Baker, and they won a really prestigious contest called the High Q. They are the nationwide championship um, individuals, and their team consists of Mark Bolton, Brianna Cagle, Brent Cannon, Kay Jordan, Will McCurley, and Will Sim. The team sponsors are Tanya Parker and Ryan Lee. And, you know, we talk about all of our sports champions, but this one also takes the cake <clears throat> to um, be a nationwide champion um, team. It's, it's, it's fabulous for our public system. And I just wanted to make sure they got recognized publicly. And also, I would like to thank the mayor and um, Jim DeLapp. And I got to meet his father, who came out for the cleanup. Uh, he spoke very highly of, of um, Jim. And uh, we didn't talk about team <laughs> years, so. but he, he is mighty <laughs> proud of you. And I don't know if he's still visiting with you, but that was a real pleasure. I'd like to thank also the city employees that came out and Harvest Church. Um, they really put out a lot of resources uh, with, their, with their coffee. It was excellent. And they had snacks, and a, and a lot of them came out to also help clean up. Um, the um, pickers, they, they are a new evolution of pickers. Uh, I mean, I have the old-fashioned ones, and you have to actually bend down and get the stuff into the pickers. These things are marvelous. They would pick up a little bottle cap. They were that good. And um, I understand that they are at the um, recycling center. So if you come out to the recycling center, you can ask, and I believe you can get the vest, the gloves, and the pickers. And uh, you get to walk with what you have when you go to one of these cleanups. So it's a win-win for everybody. And um, again, it's when you engage the community to get them out and involved. It's amazing what can happen. And uh, I thank everyone who helped pull that together. It makes our park the best it can be. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rich. I, I want to begin my announcements. Uh, I probably should have done this at the very beginning of the meeting by remarking that we lost uh, another great Mobilian in the person of Auntie Beverly in the Rickaby Park area. Uh, every time that I've been to Rickaby Park, uh, engage with the citizens that live in that community. Uh, it's one of the smaller community centers that we have. And Auntie Beverly was there to assist Ms. Jackie Simmons, uh, always encouraging, always had a tribe of young people that she was trying to uh, keep them from erring, uh, erring on the wrong side of things. Uh, she succumbed to cancer, and her funeral service was held this past Friday, I believe, and I just want to let the family of Auntie Beverly know that they are most definitely in our thoughts and in our prayers. Uh, I knew she and I discussed our various uh, health ailments, and uh, but she just was determined not to allow that particular 
uh, ailment to stop her, stymie her from contributing to our community. And she fought until the very end. And so we want to remember her in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, and let's keep the, uh, the citizens, the kids there at uh, Rickaby Park held a, a balloon uh, fly off. I forget the former term for it. With the discharged balloons in honor, I believe, over the weekend. And I called and talked with that center's director, Ms. Jackie Simmons. Uh, she's certainly been impacted. Just an out and out great individual, and she will certainly be missed. Uh, we have a series of groundbreakings, not necessarily groundbreakings, of uh, grand openings that we will need to schedule with Ms. Shonda Smith in the mayor's office, uh, the new basketball facility on the avenue, the new Lafayette Heights Park, and then also uh, the new basketball court and playground there at Rickaby Park. And there may be some area where we can recognize Auntie Beverly uh, there at the space. We look forward to having those. On Saturday, I will be uh, co-sponsoring probably uh, my seventh food giveaway with the Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church. Corinthian Cares, Men's Cares. This is a drive-up food giveaway, Saturday, May the 8th, 2021, starts at 10 a.m. The location is the Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church, 451 Wynica Avenue, Mobile, Alabama, 36604. Uh, we work with True Vine over in the Avenue area, with the Yorktown Baptist Church over in the Plateau community to make certain that families in our district that have been hit hard financially and that hit has touched their groceries have these resources. And we are blessed as we count the many things that we're blessed to have. We're blessed to have so many congregations willing to partner with the city, partner with feeding the Gulf Coast in order to make certain uh, that that essential need, which is nourishment, is met day in and day out. So I'm appreciative of uh, Dr. Cleveland, appreciative of uh, Dr. There, Yorktown, uh, the pastor there. I'm appreciative of each, Chris Williams, appreciative of each and every pastor that has been willing to step up and coordinate. It takes a lot of volunteers, a lot of time, a lot of energy, you see it and it goes real quick. They load you up, put it in the trunk, back seat, you keep going. There's a lot of uh, front work that has to take place in order for that to be successful. So again, that's Saturday, May the 8th, 2021, at the Corinthian, the Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church, 451 Wynica Avenue, uh, Mobile, Alabama, 36604. Corinthian cares and man's it cares too. That concludes my announcements. Uh, do I hear any further announcements? Motion to adjourn. Second. It probably moved. Is uh, there a second? Second. Probably second. Any discussion? No. Absent any discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed?